Hello and welcome to Touristy Sports on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. I hold a lot happen uh, during the weekend and uh, a lot of actions and Nigerian teams are uh, doing well and uh, we're happy for one team that is uh, River Supers Nigerian Basketball Champions after winning the bronze uh, uh, the third place playoff at the Basketball League Africa 2024 and the Nigerian Premier Football League having a lot of actions over the weekend also and uh, we see the resilience of teams and uh, one team in particular as it stands that is the Nigerian Premier Football League after their loss uh, it means uh, what it means right now they are relegated but they still have to fight it to the end of the season we just have uh, we have about four games to go it's March day 34 already remaining four games to the end of the season so let's see how it goes and let's see what will happen uh the mark the 38 when it's going to be the last day of the nigerian premier football league these are many more we'll be looking at on the show these are uh, lovely money but let's start uh, with the basketball league africa story where uh, over the weekend they landed in lagos and uh, the uh, sports minister senator john owaneno was there to welcome this team after doing so well at the basketball league africa becoming the first team first nigerian team to get to the semi-final of the basketball league africa and even getting something out of the competition they came third uh they defeated uh, their counterpart in the third place playoff and uh, that is petro de luanda in the third place playoff and it was a good one but at the end of the day um um, for the third place playoff against Petro de Luanda, River Supers of Nigeria, they smiled home and they won it. And the coach of the Siders, Ogodaudu, was adjudged the best coach of the tournament at the end of proceedings. So, good one. Uh, the only, uh, le let me say, the only offside of it is that uh, none of these uh, boys, none of these players made the defensive team of the basketball league africa 2024 but we have the best coach of the tournament which is an uh, one big one for us and at the end of the day we also went home with the bronze uh, uh, medal uh, title there at uh, the basketball league africa played at the bk arena in kigali rwanda and the sports minister was there to actually welcome this guy and he said best days ahead for nigerian basketball which is a good news we just have to put our house in order we have known that uh, the basketball federation that is nigerian basketball federation has actually been going through a lot of uh, crisis power to soul uh, on settling that federation but despite that against all odds uh, the river supers was able to represent nigeria very well on the continent of africa with that uh, victory in the third place uh, playoff game and the, the, the minister had this to say over the weekend right there in lagos that uh, the best days of basketball in nigeria uh, is ahead and i actually want to agree uh, with the sports minister if only we can do things right and definitely we will get it right when it comes to basketball used to be one of the uh, best uh, sports uh, here in nigeria before all of this whole power tussle and what have you uh, uh, creeped in into that federation and there has been a serious uh, challenge we remember that the women's league was not up for almost two, for two good years the women's league was not up but despite the league was not played they went to the afro basket for the women and the tigress did nigeria so proud they won the title losing they did not lose any game till they won the title um that is uh, at the uh, afro basket for women and if you look at it they also started the olympic qualifiers at the end of the day they qualified to the paris 2024 olympic games after the they, they, they beat uh, Senegal in the qualifying rounds uh, right there in Belgium. So good one for Nigerian basketball. Uh, we pray that uh, the, the power tussle um, in that federation should be settled so that we can have our sports back up and running. I don't know if Friday Joshua is ready to join up this morning on the show. All right, uh, let's have Friday Joshua. Uh, Friday Joshua, welcome to Touristy Sports on Trust TV. Uh, it's been a, it's, it was a, 
Okay, uh, he said he's not ready. If he's ready, he will join up on the show. Uh, we are expecting Friday Joshua to join us on the show. But well, congratulations to River Supers and congratulations to Ogo Daudu for winning the best coach of the tournament and then also for the team uh, winning the third place playoff and for the minister actually uh, supporting the team unless he was there in Lagos when they landed yesterday in Lagos. The minister was on ground to welcome Nigerian basketball champions, African, I will call them African champions in our own uh, in our own stripe because they they came third so they are they, they are also champion for winning the bronze medal at uh, the basketball league africa 2024 all right let's leave the basketball story still talking about uh, some uh, sports uh, in nigeria let's look at this let's go straight to rwanda again uh, <laughs> after reverse we part this so well in rwanda we have another team in a different sport doing so well in Rwanda but uh, it wasn't a good news for them yesterday where they lost uh, their game that is uh, the female yellow greens of Nigeria fall against uh, Kenya at the Kibuka Kibuka T20 ongoing in Kigali Rwanda that's a big one for us uh, we first of all we defeated uh, uh, Cameroon and then our second game at the tournament we fell to Kenya 50 runs in that game and wasn't really a good one for the Nigerian female yellow greens uh, in that game against uh, Kenya. They will be looking at uh, picking up the pieces and then continue uh, from where they actually they had a victory against Kenya, but uh, um, against uh, a victory against Cameroon, I beg your pardon, but against Kenya, it was uh, not really what the guests wanted where they first shot 50 runs in that game and uh, they were they were bowed out of of that uh, particular game by the kenya ladies Let, well let's see how they will fare and continue in the competition uh this time around for the yellow greens female of nigeria we know that uh, at the african games uh, the 2023 african games that just happened in ghana that game was held this year instead of last year uh our female yellow greens won the bronze medal match right there at the african games and that was the first time we'll be having cricket in the african debuting in the african games and nigeria won the bronze uh, title at the african games so they continued their their prowess on the continent of africa but against uh, the um, kenya female team it was uh, like i said it was a firepower for us we couldn't hold the firepower of the kenyans and we fell by 50 runs in that game but let's see the competition continues and uh, let's see nigeria is is, is is being played in a round uh, robin format the team with the highest number of points uh, wins the competition and then in that order we have first second third and what a view in that uh, particular competition so a uh, good one it's not yet over until it is over for the female yellow greens of nigeria who lost to kenya all right let's uh, leave cricket sports but before we talk about the mpf uh, let's just uh, enjoy this highlight this video between table toppers of the nigerian premier football league and sporting lagos in match day 34.
yes uh, welcome back from that video break uh, it was actually um a very big uh, one between these two teams at the Unicorn stadium in lagos uh, yesterday in march the 34 of the nigerian premier football league he ended goalless uh goalless there uh, at that particular in that particular game and the nigerian premier football league is getting hotter interesting march the 34 we just have few number of matches to go and we'll know who will be champions of the Nigerian Premier Football League MPFL 2024. A good one for all of the teams and uh, uh, this time around uh, I think the league has the league has been in a very be uh, in a very uh, good shape better organization despite some of the lapses noticed in the league. Uh, I think we are getting it right. We see teams fighting for points. Uh, teams cannot go away uh, in the Nigerian Premier Football League and get a win the, the this uh, home win syndrome at all costs i think is something that has is gradually gradually uh, phasing out in the nigerian premier football league all right uh, let's uh, quickly look at uh, the results of games played over the weekend uh, let's see uh, those results before we uh, go over to friday joshua who will be joining us on the show to look at these and uh, other story but let's quickly look at the result of the Nigerian Premier Football League, uh, Premier Football League, March the 34, we we'll have shooting stars of the Badon, uh, Trash Abia Warriors 4 nil. Bahesa United and uh, Plato United played a 3-2, 3, -two, three uh, for Bahesa United and 2 for Plato United. That was played at the Sam Sisiasha Stadium in Yenegua. That fight in the five-goal thriller. And Sunshine Stars uh, went away to Pantami Stadium, defeated Gombe 2 nil. And Ninja Tornadoes won, Quara United won, Sporting Lagos nil. Enugu Rangers nil. Uh, Enugu Trash, uh, they came from behind after they went one goal down uh, at the Aba uh, International Stadium. They defeated the uh, Rivers United 4 1. Bendel Insurance beat Castell United 2 0 at the Samuel Ogbunja Stadium. Uh, Doma United peep Lobby Stars at the Pantami Stadium, where Gombe lost to Sunshine Stars 1 0 against Lobby Stars and Rembo Stars against Canopilas at the um, uh, Ikene Township Stadium in Ogun State. It was 2 1 against uh, Cano Pillars in that particular uh, game. Uh, Friday, Joshua, welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. Uh, we've looked at uh, uh, the basketball story uh, where the senator, uh, the sports minister, uh, Senator John Owaneno, actually said the better days, the best days of Nigerian basketball is ahead after we saw what River Super has did at the Basketball League Africa 2024. And also we looked at uh, the Yellow Greens uh, female, the cricket team of Nigeria, losing their uh, game to Kenya in the Kibuka T20 uh, international event. And now we are talking about the MPFL. March day 34, we've seen that result. Enugu Rangers still at the top of the table, head on uh, in Lagos. It was a goalless affair right there at the Nikon Stadium against a spot in Lagos, in Lagos State. For having me. Uh, yes, look, let me start with the match dated three games of the Nigeria, match dated four games, I beg your pardon, with the Nigeria um, Premier Football League. <clears throat> for Inugu Rangers, who are going for uh, the MPFL at the moment, you know, it was a goalless draw between them and Sporting Lagos. Uh, yesterday in Lagos State. Of course, uh, you don't expect uh, any Rangers to have it easy against the Sporting Lagos, who started well this season along the line. They, uh, they couldn't find their rhythm and they're back at it again, trying to see how to finish uh, in the top um, part of the MPFL log at the end of the season. So uh, when you're going for the title, of course, you have everybody coming at you. And uh, with this, it's actually a setback as well for any Rangers. Knowing fully where they'll play in by itself, Aba in their next game away from home. And of course, uh, uh, Imba is just right uh, behind Enugu Rangers, and it's going to be a tough one for uh, them uh, over there. And I'm looking at um, the bottom side of the log uh, for Gombe United, who are already relegated four times uh, since um, uh, 20. Since 2001, four times, yes, and uh, only few teams have actually got more relegation more than uh, them. So for Gombe United, it's not actually good for them. But I'm particularly proud that both teams uh, coming from Gombe uh, will not uh, be relegated as Doma United are struggling really hard to ensure they survive at the drop at the end of the day because it is not going to be good, 
it is not going to be good for Gombe uh, if both teams from the state actually dropped uh, to the NNL at the end of the season. But be that as it may, for uh, all the teams struggling for uh, a position uh, for podium finish, uh, let me talk about um, Lobby Stars of Makode, who about a um, few weeks ago were actually at the top of the MPFL, and the coach actually came out talking to him that nothing can distract them uh, from winning the MPFL uh, this time <laughs> around. Now it is glaring that what they won in 2019 was uh, sheer luck because I was waiting for them to see how they were able to finish uh, this season to determine. Uh, to solidify what they won in 2019 during uh, when the league was abruptly uh, 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 stopped uh, in the middle of uh, the season. So as for them to meet up uh, with um, continental uh, engagement. So uh, what it means for Enugu Rangers, they just have to uh, concentrate more if they have to win uh, this title as Aimba FC is breathing down their neck. Not forgetting also Remo Stars of Ikene, they also stand a chance of winning that title as they are both tied um, 20, 59 points with Aimba. Why Enugu Rangers are 61 points are leading with just uh, two points. So it is not yet Uhuru. Uh, four games are to go to the end of the season, and anything can happen between Enugu Rangers, Aimba FC, and Remo Stars of Ikene. Okay, anything can happen. And for Enugu Rangers, I think uh, that game against Enyba will be at the Unam Diazikwe Stadium in Enugu State. Uh, uh, let's quickly look at uh, the, uh, the table. Just, let's just run over it. Enugu Rangers 61 points, Enyba 59, Remo Stars 59 points. Uh, all of these three teams have the chance of winning the title. Enugu Rangers just staying at the top with two points difference between second and third. And we'll have Lobby Stars on the fifth position, 52 points. Shooting Stars is on the fourth. 56 points and uh, let's go let's just flip over to the other side of the table and see what it is Gombe United as it stands uh, uh, 25 points I don't think uh, with remaining uh, remaining uh, four games and four games that is about 12, um, 12 points there about uh, do you think that 12 point can as it stands right now Gombe United is relegated um, technically they are relegated as it stands Yes, uh, like I said earlier, they can't survive it again for this season. Though they already seen themselves playing the NNL already. Uh, but yeah. looking at Heartland, Aqua United, and Bayesa United, uh, these guys still need uh, still need to fight and for uh, their survivor as um, it is still open from 12th position down to 19. That means Niger Tornadoes, uh, they are not safe. Abia are not safe. Sunshine Stars not safe. Doma United not safe. Even Sporting Lagos, uh, they are not safe. They, ha they have to fight until the end of the season to see that they survive uh, the drop. Looking at the fact that just um, uh, eight points separates, yeah, eight points separates uh, uh, the bottom four from uh, 12th position. So uh, nothing is certain at the moment. What, what matters most is how they are able to uh, carry out their remaining games or to, for, to, for the remaining uh, part of the season and see how they survive. And um, Atlanta FC of Oweri, uh, they've struggled over the past few seasons. They managed to survive last season, and this season they are sitting 19th on 32 points. And, uh, you know, it is just um, eight points separating them from Aqua United and also... Uh, uh, 10 points separated them from Survivor. So it's going to be a hopeless tax for Heartland FC of Oweri. But I hope at the end of the day, they're able to survive. Now, talking about Aqua United, who have, have, have 40, uh, on, uh, 18th position on 40 points. Uh, for Aqua United, uh, I, I never saw them uh, coming down to this level, open, uh, knowing fully well that um, they were one of the recent champions of the MPFL. But at the end of the day, when you don't get the maximum support from the state government and all of that, I think motivation is actually uh, one of their biggest problems. We can also see that with Rivers United after they won uh, the MPFL and um, that motivation that got them to, uh, to the crown champions of the MPFL was not forthcoming. We know where they are today. They are sitting somewhere in the middle of the table. So at the end of the day, they just need enough uh, motivation to be able to uh, survive at um, the end of uh, this season. But be that as it may, anything can still happen as um, this is football. Yes, anything can still happen. And we we'll just have one fixture today in the Nigerian Premier Football League. That's going to be between these two teams who are at the relegation zone, Aqua United and Heartland FC of Uri. Let's see that fi uh, fixture quickly. Let's just have that fixture. One game will be played today, and that's the last game for March the 34. Aqua United at the Eket Township Stadium against Heartland FC of Uri. So these two teams are the relegation zone, and a win for either side is going to push them up. At least it's going to boost their uh, relegation uh, survival. A win for either side. Heartland 
or Aqua United. And these two teams, they are close. They are not far from each other. Aqua Ibon to Owere is not, uh, it's not that too far. They share the <laughs> they share boundary as it stands. <laughs> but let's see how that game goes tonight, uh, this evening at the Eckert Township Stadium in Uyo. All right, let's uh, leave that story quickly and, and go back to Uyo, where the Super Eagles are preparing for their 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifier against the Bafana Bafana of South Africa. The camp was opened yesterday and the players, a lot of players before yesterday, some players uh, are, were already in town and uh, yesterday when the camp opened, they started training <coughs> immediately and we have uh, Ismail and Sadiq, uh, the home base uh, players who, who have been invited. We have Ibokwe and Co also in the squad who was invited by of uh, Coach Finidi John. Friday Joshua, I think this is a very crucial one for us against the Bafana Bafana of South Africa. You know, whenever we're playing the South African, everything uh, outside football, you know, is always interesting. Whenever in any walks of life at all, in any sector, it's always a very fierce competition between Nigeria and South Africa. And we'll be playing them on the 7th of June. Uh, but yesterday, I think the players, uh, some of the players arrived enough while we hope uh, other players will join up today and tomorrow uh, to at least to complete the team. And it's a good one that we have early birds in the camp. Yes, um, the game against um, South Africa on uh, June 7 is uh, as serious as a heart attack for the Spurgus of Nigeria and also for coach Afinidi George. Uh, you know, it's going to be his first assignment and his first uh, game as um, coach of uh, the substantive coach of the Spurgus of Nigeria. Knowing fully well that uh, we had two draws against um, Zimbabwe and Lesotho, which is not good for uh, a team of our caliber. So, and um, the game against South Africa, we have two things to play for. We have um, pride to play for and we have points to also play for because um, having get, uh, gathered two points from two games, it is... Um, uh, important that we win uh, the next two games against South Africa and against uh, the Spurs of um, Benin Republic. So, um, looking at um, the call uh, and the, the lineup of players that that are being called up, I think uh, it is actually a good one. Uh, over time, we've glamoured for the inclusion of home-based players in the Spurs group squad because at the end of the day, you don't get um, to see 20 teams play uh, in the NPFL. Play 38 matches. Um, uh, during the season, and we, and we, we, the coaches will come out and tell us that not a single player is fit uh, to be called up to the Spurgus of Nigeria. So I begin to ask myself, then where is the market for our players applying their trade in the MPFL? So this is actually a good one, and we hope at the end of the day they are able to give um, a good representation and show that uh, our leagues uh, is actually a marketplace um, to get a uh, talent that can actually demand uh, positions in. Uh, the Spirit Goose squad. So good one uh, for uh, the Spirit Goose of Nigeria. We hope we'll get a maximum result as it is very, very, very important for us to get maximum result in our next two games. Yeah, it's very, very important for us to get the maximum result in our next two games. Now, the likes of William Struz, Akon, who is in Uyo, uh, just uh, also yesterday launched his uh, foundation. And uh, what have you? Kenneth Omero is not in there. We don't have a liner who uh, just uh, his contract was just uh, uh, got extended by Nottingham Forest in England after having a very fine uh, uh, season for Nottingham Forest where they also survived the relegation and they stay back in the top flight in the English Premier League this season. Uh, and then outside, Victor Simen, uh, Victor Simen well, because of injury, was, he's not fit for this particular game. Do you think we are going to miss the services of these big guns uh, in these uh, particular games against uh, uh, Benin Republic and South Africa? Yes, definitely. The absence of um, uh, these players uh, in the caliber of uh, Victor Simen and the likes, we are definitely going to miss um, their services because um, their presence on the pitch alone builds um, enough confidence and it's actually a threat um, to our opponent. So for Victor Simen not to be available, uh, for that encounter, that uh, gives um, the Bafana Bafana of South Africa uh, one player less uh, to worry about. Uh, but that is not to say that um, those who are who have been called up as a replacement cannot get the job done. At the end of the day, it is not an individual game; it is a, a, a team game, and everybody just have to work for uh, uh, each and every one of them. It is one for all and all for one. So. 
uh, what matters most uh, at the end of the day is getting all uh, uh, three points. And if uh, the whole team actually uh, have this mentality, I think uh, some of those players not available will not be a very big problem because uh, saying it is not a problem at all, that will be deceiving ourselves. But when they have that understanding that it is um, one for all, all for one, then I think um, they should be able to fill in those gaps and do their best to ensure that we get um, the results. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, I haven't drawn two games uh, in the past, and this is our chance to actually uh, boost our chances of qualifying. So, uh, And I think from, right from the coach uh, to uh, the list of the players, they all understand the assignment, and that assignment is to get all three points. And you are playing at home. Uh, it is best for us to just get that three points while we go away in Cordova to play the Squares of Benin Republic. Okay, well, we'll go away to play this, uh, the Cheetahs of Benin Republic. Now, talking about the Cheetahs of Benin Republic, you know, we have uh, Genetra as their head coach. Uh, and he still has his boys <laughs> in the Super Eagles. That's my fear and worry. And, uh, you know, no matter how we want to look at it, he has the key <laughs> of the Super Eagles. A uh, bulk of the players are still his boys. <laughs> Do you think that will come to play against Benin Republic? Definitely. He, he was our former coach, and um, it's not been too long he left um, the Spurgus of Nigeria. So just like you said, he understands uh, the psychology of uh, some of our players. And this is where um, the input of Niji George uh, will have to come in, uh, how, he, how he's going to um, uh, psych the players to ensure that um, they get maximum result against their former coach. And for Ganetro, of course, he will... He's going to psych his own players as well to come out against the Spurgus of Nigeria. It's going to be like, uh, is it not the Spurgus of Nigeria? I coach them. This is this and this, this and that is what uh, you should do to be able to get them results uh, from them. It's actually going to be a problem. And, uh, you know, uh, on paper, we are actually better than the Spurgus of Nigeria. But, uh, you know, our last two results against Lesotho and Zimbabwe is definitely a motivation for Benin Republic. So they'll be looking at that game. They'll watch those games and see how... Uh, these countries were able to hold the Spurgus of Nigeria to a draw and possibly work out modalities to get all three points against Nigeria. So it's definitely going to be a problem knowing fully well that he, is, he was our former coach and, uh, he was, and he understands most of the players that are still in the Spurgus team. Uh, so for Fini the judge, uh, he just have... Uh, uh, it's a battle between both coaches, one, and um, battle for three points and also uh, for pride. Okay, battle for three points and pride. I think the three points first is what the Super Eagles will be looking for. Uh, let's quickly take this video in one of the qualifiers for the 2023 AFCON uh, against Guinea Bissau here in Abuja when the Super Eagles lost. But despite that, they were able to qualify for the AFCON and they went straight, they went on to the final, but lost the final to Cote d'Ivoire. Let's enjoy this highlight. And when we come back, will go straight to Thailand, Bangkok, where it is not a good news for Nigerian boxers. Yes, welcome back from that video break. It was in Nigeria lost that game at the Mosul Abila National Stadium here in Abuja during the 2023 Afcon qualifiers. But we, had, we went back and were able to redeem our image. The same one nil they defeated us here was we were able to beat them one nil in the return leg right uh, in Guinea. All right, uh, let's go straight to Thailand. Like I said, where it's so all good news for our Nigerian boxers. Uh, over uh, the second world boxing qualification, uh, boxing qualification for the Paris Olympic Games. We had hopes. Two boxers were remaining on the, over the weekend, uh, the likes of uh, Deshina and co Patricia Mbata. We were hoping these two boxers will be able to pick the Paris Olympic ticket. But at the end of the day, the losses, we'll be looking at this, uh, this particular story, um, where six of them uh, left the shores of this country to partake at the, um, that is the second uh, window qualification tournament uh, for the uh, boxing event in Paris in Bangkok, Thailand, at the end of the day, six of them uh, didn't get uh, the ticket. Uh, we had fighters in 50 kg, 57 
kg 66 kg 75 kg and plus 92 kg categories but at the end of the day uh, the people were hoping on the last two were hoping on Mr. Ali Adishina Zainab uh, who were uh, expecting to qualify uh, was defeated by Kavio Oja Fila of Finland in the women's 50 kg category that was yesterday in Bangkok and this called for worry uh, Nigeria used to do so well when it comes to boxing but this time around this time around we don't know what is happening to us uh, boxing has now become a shadow of itself uh, in Nigeria and in the world at large because these sports we used to have when it comes to boxing Nigeria used to have uh, that firepower, that powerhouse in boxing in the 90s, 70s, 80s, and then uh, late 90s also. But from 2000s downward, Nigerian boxing has not really um, been what it is uh, well, well in, those, in time past. Uh, Friday Joshua, like I said, this calls for a team of worry. In 2016, that was uh, Rio de Janeiro, we have FIA Jagba who represented Nigeria in boxing event, but we have been struggling ever since then. And even before then, uh, boxing has not really taken shape. What is going on and where did we get it wrong? Yeah, I, I think um, part of uh, where we got it wrong was um, relying on mere talent. Now, if we ask ourselves, how many competitions are these boxers engaging in? Uh, within Nigeria, not to talk of uh, on the continent, uh, on the African continent, uh, you can barely uh, uh, count them because um, they are really uh, uh, unavailable. We don't go for this tournament. So when uh, we rely solely on talent and you don't get, uh, put um, uh, uh, infrastructures in place to actually train uh, these uh, 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 athletes, it's not about um, training here in Nigeria and competing here in Nigeria and you are the number one boxer in Nigeria. Have you gone onto the African continent to test your powers and see how you'll be able to compete with um, other boxers outside the country. You know, since FA Ajagba in 2016, we've been struggling until date. Uh, this is 2024. We will not be featuring in uh, boxing in the Olympic event. So that goes to tell us um, that um, the Boxing Federation needs to do more. Uh, whatever it is that their problem is, they should start looking for ways uh, to actually uh, fill in those gaps. Yes, I mentioned earlier, we relied so much on talent. If you look at some of the boxers we produced in Nigeria in the past, it was basically uh, talent that brought them fire to where they were and before getting that platform to be able to train themselves to become international boxers. Talk about the likes of um, Efia Jagba, talk, talk about the likes of... Um, uh, uh, Bash Ali, uh, I, I, I won't count um, Anthony Joshua as a Nigerian as he did not represent Nigeria. He had that talent and he was groomed and that talent was uh, groomed by uh, 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 the UK and he actually fought for the UK and won laurels for them in the Olympics. So now, the ones we have here, what are we doing? What are we putting in place? What are the infrastructure? Uh, when you go to the uh, National Stadium Sulu Lere, they are boxing uh, ring is it up to international st standard? What are their nutrition and all of this? And I think uh, maybe uh, they should get more support from the Minister of um, Sports to be able to grow boxing in Nigeria. As concentration, like we all know, is basically on football, athletics, and um, some other popular games. So I think uh, it's, it's left for the other federations president. This cut across other federations that are not popular. They need to begin to think outside the box and not rely solely on government, as governments cannot do it all. As government cannot do it all, we remember the likes of A. Fiongo Kohn, Ahmed Sadiq, Dick Tiger. Of those days, these are men when it comes to boxing uh, in Nigeria. We've not really seen um, this, uh, we've not really seen what these guys uh, left behind with replicating uh, the same thing. Now, you made mention of, if, if, of uh, infrastructure. What other area do you think the government can come in? Uh, definitely, we cannot leave everything for the government alone. We've been saying this, always saying this. But what do you think yes, we can um, come in? How can we go back? How can we have a total revamp of that federation? Uh, I just mentioned some few names of great boxers we had in this country in time past. Uh, we, we still want to see that. Of As of present, we have Joshua, but not fighting for Nigeria. So what do you think the government yes, can see, do uh, uh, to bring back uh, 
the, uh, to bring back that 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 spirit that vibes when it comes to <coughs> boxing what we used to what we are known for the, if you remember dick tiger of this world he fought with some of the best boxers in the world so um what can we really do to get to get back to that uh, glory days yes um first of all let's every, everything starts with uh the government now what can the government do for uh, the nigerian boxing federation to help boxers uh grow even discover their talent and even groom that talent into becoming superstars first of all they should provide the facilities infrastructure to train i think that is basically the responsibility of uh, the government for all the sporting federation provide provide the enabling environment then aside that, now talk about um, the uh, former boxing champions we've been able to produce in Nigeria. What have they come back to do for Nigerian boxing? What have they come back to do for kids and youths who want to go into boxing? What are their contributions? These are things that help uh, grow the momentum around the sport, that help bring youth. Okay, if uh, they begin to see uh, the likes of Okami okay, Bash Ali, uh, Efe Ajagba coming to Nigeria to set up a foundation or to set up a boxing, a boxing club. It will spur more people to go into that field and they will have a lot of uh, uh, options, a lot of um, uh, talent to pick from and groom. But in a situation whereby you have just a few number of persons showing interest in boxing, it is what is available that you can select from. But if you have them in large numbers, then we will spoil your choices and select the best among the best. So first of all, the government needs to provide an enabling environment, infrastructure for boxing to thrive in Nigeria. Then um, the former Nigeria International, when it comes to boxing, uh, Bashali, Simon Peters, Ifea Jagba, even the Anthony Joshua, who sometimes uh, does not... Uh, hide the fact that he is a Nigerian. What have they come back to Nigeria to do for boxing? You know? Then for the Federation, how often do you organize boxing tournaments for your local boxers? For them to assess themselves. It's not all about training day and night, train, training day and night, and there are no competitions for you to go and showcase what you've learned from that training. Now, competitions okay. need to be organized here in Nigeria. And how often do they, uh, the, how often do they uh, tend to want to uh, showcase their talent on the African continent? I believe there are some boxing uh, competition going on on the African continent. Do we, do we sponsor our, our boxers to go there and uh, showcase what they are able to do? When all these things are not put in place and it is time for qualification to Olympics, like for instance, what happened in, uh, Thailand. in Thailand? Over, over, over the weekend, you just go there and get all your boxers being beaten uh, blue and black. That is what uh, it does to uh, you. When you fail to when you, when, you, when you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Okay, when you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. All right, uh, let's see how it goes. The like of uh, the likes of Muhammad Sambo, who was born first October 1967, was one great boxer. He was there at the Summer Olympics, Barcelona, 1992, and also a Commonwealth gold winner back in boxing. Well, let's see how it goes. Uh, the federation, the government, and the private individuals, they also need to do more uh, when it comes to boxing in Nigeria. Let's uh, leave uh, uh, Nigeria now. Let's talk about this still on boxing. Over the weekend, also, big one happened. Uh, and uh, as it stands right now, Anthony Joshua might just uh, get a shot. Uh, this guy in September and uh, we've been hearing that there's going to be a fight in Wembley and that fight could just be against uh, Daniel Dubois who uh, um, after over the weekend defeated uh, his uh, 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 his uh, counterpart that is his uh, opponent from Croatia uh, Philip Hegovic uh, in that particular in the seventh round of that game and as it stands right now after after that win he calls out Anthony Joshua after a stunning uh, win Friday Joshua uh, this man wants to get a shot Dubois that is Daniel Dubois uh, against Anthony Joshua and that fight definitely happened in September uh, in Wembley. We heard there is a fight in Wembley, but we don't know the fighter. But just yesterday over the weekend, uh, news came out uh, before that fight that Joshua will actually know his opponent for that September fight. As it stands right now, that opponent might just be Daniel Dubois, who defeated the uh, Hegovic over the weekend in the seventh round of that uh, bout between these two. 
please come again. I didn't get that question. I said that Daniel Dubois uh, beating Hegovic over the weekend, and now he's going to get a shot at Anthony Joshua. Uh, okay, yes. Um, if, 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 if I heard you well, uh, he calls out on Joshua after his turning win against them, Hegovic. Of course, uh, that, that is um, an opportunity for uh, Joshua uh, to actually scale uh, through the rankings again and uh, uh, get back to where he used to be. And uh, for Joshua, uh, you are, you are as good as your last um, against, and it was it has been um, two wins for Joshua in the last two games. So I think uh, uh, he's definitely ready to face uh, Dubious. And for Dubious also, uh, he would want to get the better of Joshua, knowing fully that Joshua is not as invincible as he used to be. And uh, you see, uh, in, in boxing, you just uh, cannot um, uh, predict what happens, especially when you don't have a um, smooth run of uh, results um, going your way in your previous game. So, uh, but at the end of the day, I just hope Joshua will be able uh, to surmount this one and um, uh, climb up the ladder to get a chance um, to fight uh, for some of uh, the titles he has actually lost. But good run enough for uh, Daniel Dubious. He's been coming uh, since way back. Nobody comes out of nowhere. It's, uh, it has been a process. And he's, steady, and he's making steady progress okay. uh, for himself. So I'll keep our fingers crossed and see uh, how that pans out between him and Joshua. All right. Let's uh, stay, stay, stay in England. Now let's stay in the same Wembley. Over the weekend, uh, Real Madrid <laughs> against uh, the team from Germany. It was 2-0 on the night after Borussia Dortmund do so well in the first half. And now they are the champions winning a record 15th uh, UEFA Champions League trophy. Uh, Friday, Joshua, everybody thought that Borussia Dortmund was going to stop this, uh, this uh, history from Real Madrid. But at the end of the day, they fell 2 0 courtesy of uh, 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 Daniel Carvajal and uh, uh, was Vinny Jr.'s uh, goal in that particular game. And they have they've won their 15th title. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody thought Borussia Dortmund was going to stop Real Madrid. If everybody did uh, uh, think in that direction, I did not. Because uh, having seen Real Madrid played uh, in the UEFA Champions League uh, final a couple of times, you know that um, they are meant for the UEFA Champions League. And under this kind of coach, Carlo Ancelotti, uh, he is uh, the best match analyst. Uh, I think even Pep Guardiola, uh, is learning from Carlo Ancelotti. Now, knowing fully well that um, Real Madrid were able to do it twice against Atletico de Madrid in the same pattern where you have Atletico de Madrid dominating the game from the blast of the whistle and when it matters most, towards the tail end of the uh, match, Real Madrid came from nowhere and won those games twice against Atletico de Madrid. Now, the same thing was playing out against Borussia Dortmund. If you watch that game in the first half, Borussia Dortmund had all the chances uh, to bury that game, but uh, uh, Tuba Couture and the defense of um, Real Madrid were up to the tax, ensuring that nothing goes in. And yes, um, right remember, in Real Madrid finished the first half without a shot on target. And uh, that made a lot of people think that uh, Borussia Dortmund would, at the end of the day, uh, stop Real Madrid. But, you know, for Real Madrid, it's not over until it is over. And just like okay. uh, they used to do, they did it again. Uh, in the tail end of uh, the game, they were able to score two goals uh, to wrap up uh, their 15th title. Okay, and no that wonder is they where... were in church. All right, Freddy uh, Joshua, that for, is where we'll uh, be leaving it. Thanks for joining on the show. It's is a wonderful one having you on the show, Friday, Joshua. And for Real Madrid, congratulations to them. Congratulations to Don Carlo, seven Champions League medal on that man's neck. Wow, no coach has ever done it. Yes, that is where we'll leave it on the program this morning. Tourist Sports, I am Emmanuel Fashimi. Say thanks for watching.